some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in uh, Washington State, where we find a uh, Sovtard in the middle of a uh, pre-trial hearing who ends up talking himself into a contempt of court charge because, well, he just doesn't understand how the process actually works. So, without further ado, let's get this freaking S show on the road, shall we? I believe I saw recently there was a eval yeah. set up and they were unable to reach him to participate in that evaluation. That's my understanding, Your Honor. I saw that as well. I think the last time we were in court, um, counsel indicated that the uh, meeting had been set up to do the evaluation and the date uh, was discussed. And it looks like Mr. Richard did not appear for that. And for the record, Sean Parent for Mr. Richard. Um, yes, unfortunately, that appears to be the case. I'm not sure why Mr. Richard didn't appear at the evaluation. So Mr. Richard, we've been waiting for you to talk to um, one of the doctors, and we've been setting this case over for that to happen. Mm -hmm. When you were here on April 8th, we discussed that you were scheduled uh, for that appointment on April 24th. Uh, so I know that you were aware that they had you calendared uh, Mr. Richard, why didn't you show up for that appointment? Well, that was an assumption. I wasn't aware of anything. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> oh, so you weren't aware of it. You know, funny how I remember that particular hearing uh, from a few months ago, uh, but you somehow conveniently forget about it? Yeah, sure. Well, you were at the hearing when we talked about it, so. I don't recall. You participated on Zoom on April 8th, and we discussed that your evaluation was calendared for the 24th of April. Did, was there anything signed for confirmation? Well, your attorney has been working to get that set up. So, well, have I haven't talked to anybody. Mr. Perrin, have you been uh, in contact with Mr. Richard? Uh, looks like my office, we tried to reach him to uh, make sure that he appeared at the evaluation, but we are unsuccessful in reaching him. Do you have proof of that? Uh, yes, I have my colleagues' notes that we tried to get a hold of you. And what was the number? Um, I'll tell you in just a moment. So, Mr. Richard, we have the phone number that ends in one. I'm talking about the number you supposedly contacted the defendant on. Yeah, you're the defendant, and it's the phone number that ends in one. No, uh, that's an assumption and presumption. I'm not, in, I'm not nobody's defendant. Yeah, that's a pitiful little argument right there, dude. Uh, if you weren't the defendant, then why are you sitting here trying to defend yourself in this particular hearing? That little argument, once you really think about it, doesn't really make any sense now, does it? Especially in this context. But of course, you Sovtards just really don't have any conceptual uh, organizational skills within your head because of all that lead paint that you consume over the years. My authorized representative of that account. Okay, so Mr. Richard, the thing is, if you cannot participate out of custody, the court may have to set bail and have you um, placed in custody to get this evaluation accomplished. So when you are informed of the appointments and then you choose not to appear, the court interprets that as a willful um violation under what 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 law are you saying that i can what, what charges are what are the charges we've gone over that you have been told that you are charged with driving while license suspended and driving without an ignition interlock device oh yeah ignition interlock device uh yeah i can see why you uh have been trying this soft hard defense i'm sure that uh, alcohol you've been consuming has been uh 
well, laced with something else of the lead variety, I would suppose. I mean, it would explain your uh, melted brain cells. So I understand, that you, I understand you disagree, but at well, this point, we I don't, need I don't, to... I don't, I don't disagree with none of the facts. I said, what was the date? The date of the driving? Is that what you're asking? Well, I don't drive, so I'm trying to figure out the date you have on file. June 4th, 2022, Your Honor, is the charge date. Thank you. Okay, and have I been charged with anything? Yes. And what is it? What are the charges? As the, as the court just read aloud, driving with license suspended and driving without a functioning ignition interlock. And is there a witness that you can bring to attain to that? A soft art, if you would take the time to understand what the trial uh, process is all about, you would understand that this is a pre-trial hearing. Witnesses do not come in until the trial itself. Uh, get with it, dude. Do your research, and maybe you'll actually uh, have a chance of winning this case if you do want to continue to go pro se. But until then, my suggestion would be get yourself a damn lawyer. Those are the criminal charges. You also were cited for not having insurance. Yeah, but do you have a witness? Yes, the city has witnesses. We we have the officer that will be testifying. The officer. Okay, well, can you can you can you read the police rec uh, ticket on the record? We're not having a trial today. We're trying to figure out whether or not you are uh, competent and able to proceed in this matter, and that requires that you speak to a doctor. But that is well, what we're trying to accomplish, and Mr. Richard. If you refuse, can you explain? Can you explain to? I don't understand. So, can you explain to me how? We've How they work. explained this to you previously. So what I'm going to ask you is whether or not you are going to comply with meeting the doctor out of jail or does the court need to set bail and have you booked into custody so they can talk to you there? That's not what I'm wanting to do. I would like you to uh, cooperate and have this case proceed with you out of custody. Well, I need some type of contract to obtain to whatever you're asking. Dumbass! You dumbass! You're a dumbass! Such a dumbass! You're an ass! Because I have questions, and you're not answering them. Are you literally not answering any questions? Your Honor, at this point, I think given the track record of Mr. Uh, Richard um, and his unwillingness to comply, the city is going to be asking that the court set bail and remand him uh, on that bail to have the evaluation done in custody. Mr. Richard, can you assure the court that you will come to an out of custody evaluation? I will agree to anything if you guys can tell me the nature and cause of this action. They have told you over and over again what the up charges are, but you thus far have refused to accept those facts and uh, continue to waste the court's time at this point. I mean, they gave you the answers, but you don't want to accept it. Uh, well, you better accept it because that's what they are. My Sixth Amendment right. I need to know these things before we can move further. Are you refusing to tell me? I, I didn't quite hear your question. What are you asking? I need to know the nature and cause of this action. I need to know that before we can move forward. Yeah, I believe that the court has told you that you're you're being charged with driving license suspended in the third degree and operating a motor vehicle without an ignition headlock device. Okay, well, I have a question for the judge. What's that, Hello? Mr. Richard? Hello? Mr. Richard? Hello? Are, are, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You should sit down, and then instead of having me facing you <clears throat> at the clouds, you should participate in this hearing. Thank you. So every time we have a hearing, you ask these same questions and we've explained to you that you're facing criminal charges and that we need to have the doctor speak to you. And so right now, your option is whether or not, as your attorney said, you can agree to meet with the doctors and stay out of jail to do that, or the court will have to remand you into custody so that they so can basically you you're you're telling me you refusing to answer me. You're refusing to answer any questions? That, that's what you're saying? Because I just, I just have questions. 
All right, does Hello? not. Mr. Richard, we've answered your questions. We're going to proceed at this point. I'm going to. I didn't even not... answer. I didn't even ask the question. So how did you answer it? That's what I'm saying. Are you refusing to answer the questions? What, what do you want to know besides what you're charged with? What was your other questions? My other question was, did you or did you not take an oath to uphold the Constitution? Can I just get a yes or no? That would be a yes. So you're enforcing statutes right now. And so you're, you're, you're totally going against your oath. So I'm trying to figure out what authority do you have to tell me to do anything? as a public servant. Well, it's clear that you have no idea what statutes actually are. They are actually laws. And second of all, it is clear that you don't understand that a judge does have authority over you in a case like this. Uh, you have committed a crime, and therefore you have to face the penalties for it. And the judge is there to preside over the uh, case that will see to that particular uh, action, you nitwit. Can you answer that question, please? Uh, Mr. Richard, I am authorized by the revised Code of Washington to sit in this court. I'm uh, duly appointed to be a municipal court judge. I've taken my oath. You're charged with a violation okay, of the RCW oath, and the uh, Lake Forest Park Municipal oath, Code. Why are, you, why, why are you enforcing statutes if you took an oath to uphold the Constitution? I know you don't think that it applies to you, but it does. So I, I didn't say, I didn't say it didn't apply bail. to you. I'm going to set it bail in this matter at $10,000. You're, you're, you're making assumptions, ma'am. You're making assumptions, ma'am. I never said it didn't apply to me. But we both know here that the Constitution is not for me. It is for the public servants. So I don't know why you're making assumptions and presumptions. All, all I had was questions. And you're just going around me. So Mr. Chairman, is, is I'm going to set bail at $10,000. And we're going to end this hearing, Mr. Richard. You can uh, report to jail. You can come in. But... We are trying to do this without you having to be in custody, but you are refusing to cooperate. I didn't refuse anything. I was never put on notice, so I didn't refuse anything. Or you were, I right know now, you were put on notice at our last hearing, so that's on the record. So What's I on the record? that to be uh, false, Mr. Richard. So that so is everything. That everything, is everything, everything that I asked you, is, am I wrong? Uh, is yes, that what you're saying? Yes, you're wrong. So we're going to do this, and we are done on this matter. Mr. Perrin, if he does reach out to you, and something can be arranged for them. But um, right now, the doctors have tried twice to contact you, and you've taken a spot that would have been available to someone else. So we need to uh, progress this matter, and that bail will be set, and we'll um, continue with an in-custody hearing date when you are booked. A warrant will be issued. And upon the booking, Your Honor, would the court consider amending the um, competency evaluation order to reflect in custody um, yes. just to kind of expedite that process? Yes. For the record, the judge is willingly going against public policy. So on here and in, you're held liable for everything you do from here and on out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Richard. For the record. Well, for the record, you're a bloody moron. I mean, uh, everything that you said here was a bunch of word salad uh, that doesn't work in a court of law. And you were still held in contempt because you decided to use the word salad instead of using logical arguments. So maybe next time you learn, but nah, I really doubt it. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?